about the, the Eagle. Oh. Oh, okay. Hi, everybody. I'm Jim Provenzano, arts and nightlife editor for the Bay Area Reporter. And this is our special segment within a chat with uh, veteran bartender and author Mark Abramson and the incomparable Sharon McKnight, who has been performing in the Bay Area and around the world for decades. But our chat is specifically about the BAR's relationship with nightlife and bars. And I think you both have some tall tales to tell. Uh, you're going to have to pay me a lot of money to tell the tall tales. I'm going to just give you the short. Okay. Short tales so when was your first involved in some of these, you know, can you tell, remember your first or earlier performances in a nightclub? Um, like the plush room, we found an ad we'll show later, but what was your first gig in the Bay area? Uh, first gig it, it, besides the acting thing, uh, my right, first gig was Broadway. at Chez Jacques. Chez Jacques, which was on the corner of California and Hyde, uh, owned by Jack Essex, who was a French teacher at City College. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to have a cabaret, so he opened up a cabaret. And they had three performers that would do the weekends, Dana, David, and Wesla Whitfield. And Wesla was shot and was in a wheelchair and could not perform. It was in the hospital. And so they needed a third person to come in. And uh, a friend of mine told me about the auditions. Uh, uh, when I was working with uh, at the brothers, as a matter of fact, Vince, the general manager there, told me about the auditions and I should go in and sing a song. I went, I go, okay, I go and sing a song. Well, I got the job, and uh, so I was working there, and they would feed us. I think it was twenty bucks, and they fed us, gave us a, a French meal, very tasteful. <laughs> and we would do two shows, one at nine thirty and one at eleven thirty. People used to stay out late, you know. And remember the eleven thirty yeah. shows, so. That was kind of where it started. And then uh, I got my own solo act there. And then it went from the solo act at Chez Jacques to Fanny's and Trinity Place. And uh, I can't even remember. I have, I have scrapbooks upstairs, hundreds of scrapbooks upstairs with all the ads and people's thank you notes. And, you know, I, uh, my mother was a Virgo. She saved everything. You know what I mean? So <laughs> it rubbed it off on me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mark, do you remember the first time you saw Sharon per perform in the Bay Area? At the Woods, at the Russian River. Ah, yeah. There was another place I worked. I opened the Woods, as a matter of fact. Yes. It was the first act there. Carl, uh, Carl, Carl and Jean. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was the? Al. 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 But there was, uh, uh, oh, Jean yeah, and Al. Yeah, yeah. Al was the other one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Carl lives now in Palm Springs. Right. I heard that. Yeah. And Mark, you worked at the Woods for several years or seasons? I worked three seasons. Okay. Yeah, 81, two, three. And hmm. I moved back in 84. And that's where I first in started. your, in your most like, recent book? No, it's from, um, oh, yeah. My most recent book, River Days, River Nights, is just about the river, my work at the river. Right. Oh, I, think uh, I saw Sharon before I moved up there. I think I saw Sharon like at Sutter's Mill and. Trinity Actually, Play Trinity. 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 Okay. Sutter, Sutter never had uh, entertainment. Oh. They, they made, the, the new Sutter, after they moved, had one. I was there one time. Oh, right, right. It just oh, it, 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 it wasn't the crowd that wanted entertainment. I mean, no, they, they were a sports, a, a softball sponsor, uh, more of a sports bar, as I recall. No, I mean, I wasn't there. From my homework, Sutter's Mill was, uh, was a, more of a, of a sportsy bar. I'm sure okay. I thought you were like Take your word for it, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's when I did the the sports exhibit. Sutter's Mill was they were the earlier sponsors of the gay softball league and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Um, so Mark, you had a little story about one of your men behind bars events. Oh well with Sharon. That was in, in the book uh, for my brothers. Sharon was in town to do to no, I ran into you at Rock Hudson's memorial gathering. Oh at, Lord. <laughs> At Jane, well, it was Harvey Milk Plaza. It is Howard Harvey Milk Plaza. On the corner of Market and Castro. Yes. Yeah. And you said, oh, I heard all about your Men Behind Bars show. I'm in town to do it. And I said, we open like tomorrow. <laughs> and we were rehearsing for months. And you <laughs> said, well, I don't care. I'll do whatever you need. And I was just kind of flabbergasted. And oh. I thought about it. And the next morning I called you and said, Oh my God, you're in town. Well, we've got to do something. You've got to use you somehow. I said, so you can you can tap dance, right? And you said, oh sure. And I said, okay, in a gorilla suit. <laughs> and you said, sure, whatever. <laughs> so 
so you did the finale, and then in the first act, we had you come out and introduce a country western dance group called Winchester, and you did a and you did about a five minute comedy shtick before you introduced them and talked about you had just been up at the Russian River where it was raining so hard uh, you couldn't flush the toilet. I mean, it was, it was really <laughs> That's funny. That's true. That was, was true. Very funny. Was it 82, 81? It was 84 or 84. five. No, oh, okay. It was 86 because that was the first year that Gail was. Right. That was the flood, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, and, and the we, Victoria Theater was was flooding. I mean, there was there were drips. Certain seats right. were block off because there were leaks from the ceiling. Yeah, you said you were going to do a come back and do a benefit for the new ceiling too. That's too yeah. funny. <laughs> well, well, I, I didn't have time to find a picture or a video, but Mark, possibly if you look up Men Behind Bars on YouTube, we might find that closing number. Did you say? I think so. I think I think I put it on YouTube. When you come out in the gorilla suit tap dancing, you take the head off and you're singing about if anything goes from oh my God. beating Grace Jones by two decades with that with that outfit. Um, so Sharon, what was one of your favorite performances in the Bay Area? Was it that was classy that worked really well? Was it Feinstein, the old Feinsteins, or the plush room, or a concert? Uh, I think uh, the plush room was probably my favorite room to play because the lights, the technical there was exquisite. Mm -hmm. The guy who ran it had his shit together, you know, he, and they had real stage lights, Fresnel's, ellipsoidals, you know, right. uh, it, it was technically great. And they had a nice dressing room that was clean. Um, you didn't uh, have to use a bathroom or a kitchen area or. Well, you, know, you could get, you could get to the restrooms, but you know, it was just, the, the stage technically was clean. The piano was good. You know, uh, Russell Cox owned it. Russell Cox, my God, I haven't said that name in a hundred years. Russell Cox. And then he later had the plush room in Atlanta. He got the, the York Hotel in Atlanta, right, which was right across the street from that famous uh, cinema there uh, in in Atlanta. I can't remember where they uh, they redid it and why I was there and what just you know. I've, I've been around the block a few times here, boys. Yes, right? as have we all. Um, can you tell me some about your interactions? Did you have any interactions with Bob Ross over the years when he was alive? Oh. And <laughs> we go back so far. Bob Ross helped me quit smoking. We were sitting at some benefit dinner. We were at the same table. We were always pals. Just uh, and I can remember him sitting and watching the Reno Rodeo in Reno, we did the, the plaza at the, the, the hotel and he was sitting in his chair up on the balcony watching all the gay men dancing around together and just kind of smiling great. But we were sitting at some benefit for something or other. And I said, gee, I wish I didn't smoke. And he said, well, I quit smoking. I said, you did? How did you? And he said, well, I had acupuncture. I said, really, acupuncture? I've never had acupuncture. And he said, no, here, I'll tell you what I'll do. It was, it was like my birthday or something. I know it had to be, you couldn't, in, in like April. And so he said, I'll, I'll pay for it. Uh, his name is Aunt, Dr. Andy Wong and he's on Church Street and I'll pay for it as a gift to you for all that you've done. And it was like $30. So I went to Andy Wong, I made an appointment, went to Andy Wong, he stuck two needles in here and one near my knees and I quit smoking. Wow. So, yeah, Bob, I Bob, I thank him for that. And matter of fact, uh, it, I think probably later you'll have a picture of Bob and Louise Molinari. Uh, they were the grand marshals and they were also the uh, honorary chairs of the AIDS emergency fund after. Let's after go to those. Let me, let me set up my uh, little, my screen and open up the photos and let, we'll show them. We can oh, draw them every time. Oh, gee. Sorry, that's a little prismic effect. that's very unflattering. So here's an early reference to you, Sharon, in 1980 in January, right next to a bathhouse ad, which and the hey. night in paradise. But of course, why not? Yeah. Classy. Oh, you performed with MC Jose, Jose Saria, the yeah. first time? Yep. That's yeah. we, we actually worked Chez Jacques together. Oh, okay, yeah, he, he was still performing. He doing his opera, opera in the afternoon. Oh, okay. Yeah, when he was, uh, well, the paper was a little primitive then. I love the font. I love the awkwardness. But here's a lovely ad for you playing at the Hotel York. That's the plush room. That's the, the great room right there. That's the great room. Huh. $4. Goodness. What a bargain. 
four, G4, everybody else is two. <laughs> I, was, yeah. I was on Saturday. I was on Saturday. I was on Saturday. That's why it was a little bit more. Expensive. Oh, a little more because it's the highlight. Well, here's a highlight. You performed with Divine, the one and only Divine. Yeah. For a Halloween show at, I can't see the venue. It's the plush room. Oh, okay. What was that like? Well, it was weird because his manager was going with the former boyfriend of the owner of the York Hotel. And so they hated each other. Uh, just And so he couldn't have the, the uh, what's his name, wouldn't let the manager come into the hotel at all. He was barred from the hotel. So uh -huh. the manager by himself. He, poor little divine all by himself. And so I thought, well, let's go and welcome him, Sharon. You know, you'd be, since, you know, like, trying to make him feel at home. Blah, 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 blah. So I knock on the door. And up to the door comes divine, naked, but wrapped a towel around, huge, <laughs> big towel, big towel around his chest and stuff. And he's got soap all over his arms. He's shaving his arms and his chest, getting ready for the show. Wow. <laughs> Um, what a, if I only had a photograph, what a way to meet this guy. Yeah, really. Hi, Glenn. <laughs> wow. Right. Here's the moving to the Beaux Arts Ball in 19, November 1980. There's a photo of you with a few other talents that I don't remember. Pam Brooks. I can see Pam. Yeah. And there's Dana Ballin, who was one of the three uh, on the uh, upper uh, left hand corner. Dana Ballin was one of the three of us that worked at Chez Jacques. Oh, okay. And then. Uh, uh, Amanda Hughes. I remember her name, and I don't, but I don't know what ever happened to her. So, what was Trinity Place like? Trinity Place was two stories. Uh, the restaurant was upstairs with a bar, and then there was a bar downstairs, uh, which had high top tables so that you could stand up and greet your friends. It was. Oh. Uh, strictly business, really. A lot of businessmen who were working downtown that were gay. Oh, okay. hang out. So it was, uh, and I started there. Uh, we would do from five to uh, five to eight, right? Uh, or five thirty to eight thirty. Do three right. shows, and then we get in a car. Hold on to your hats on this one. Get in a car and drive to Oakland and do it. At the old train station there from 9 30 to 12. <laughs> okay. Busy uh, night. Working for tips. This is not a good quality photo, but it, it does have historic merit in that you're performing at the Trocadero Transfer for a Gay Freedom Day parade fundraiser. Yeah. Huh. It's another photo by Rink, um, but I like that. And this is a great ad. You had a gig at Fanny's. Yeah. That was uh, right. kind of a place that set me on the map. In, in Instead of doing uh, the Polk Street area or the downtown, I did you know, the Castro. Okay. Which was lovely because on Sunday I did I did the, I started out on one night and then our one night outdid the woman that was working on Friday and Saturdays, and so they put me on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday brunch, and you could go in there and they had this huge pile of bacon. Just <laughs> uh, you had to walk. Through the restaurant, uh, you walk up the stairs, and then there'd be a landing, and then you go upstairs. There's the dining room, and downstairs in the in, in, on, on the street level, that was where the the bar and the uh, little tiny stage was. Oh, okay. in the middle level, there was the kitchen and the bathroom in the back, and everybody would have to walk through the kitchen, through the the uh, storage area to get to the bathroom. But there was always <laughs> a pile and plate of bacon. Yeah, I'm <laughs> <laughs> this I'm is the water, just thinking about it, quite frankly. <laughs> you were practically on the sidewalk performing. I remember the yeah, it was, it was huge right. near right. windows, big, yeah. big picture windows, so that I would talk to the people on the street through the windows, right? Make a few comments, and everybody would laugh, and then people would go, I wonder what the hell she's saying about me, you know. <laughs> People would come in, you know. It was, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Along with some cheesy right. clip art, there's an ad for Trinity Place on a page in 1982 about New Year's Eve events. And you can see the little purple listing, the plush room again. You're performing a New Year's Eve show. Did you do a lot of New Year's Eve shows? You work pretty much a lot of just January 31st? No, I worked, I worked like six days a week. 
But did you do a lot of New Year's Eve shows? Uh, at Fanny's, yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, but it's, New Year's Eve is not a night you want to work. No, it's, it's rough. It's rough. These are non-professional partiers who've come out to party. Yeah. And well, let's look at some professionals. Here's Sylvester, Shirley MacLaine, and Debbie Reynolds you shared a stage with for a benefit. Now, tell me, you mentioned that this was the first large-scale AIDS benefit? Yes, it was. It was the first AIDS benefit. Yeah. At uh, What's the, the, what's the uh, auditorium across the street from uh, the Opera House? Uh, you the guys Herbs? Huh? Bill Graham? The Herbs? No. The Herbs Theater? No, no. Where is it? Uh, oh, um, across Dayton. off of them. Symphony Hall. Yes, Dayton. with the Symphony Dayton. with Babies. It was David. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I didn't scan the front page that had that information on it. Um, oh, yes. that was at Davies Hall. I didn't realize. Big. Yeah. yeah. It was Davies. And um, I got a call from the guy who was the manager at uh, at the plush room. Uh and said, can you come and do a show today? Uh, it was the day of the show. Huh. I mean, hello. And so I threw my act together, and there we were. Well, we're glad you're part of that historic moment. Uh, let's head up to the river for a 1983 event on July 4th at Drums. Fife and, Fife's and Drums. It's across the street from Fife's. Okay. And it was in a meadow. <laughs> It was outdoors. It was an outdoor gig, and people sat on the ground. Oh, okay. And we had a country oh, western band. Uh, and, was uh, disco for fifes across the street, and drums had a huge pool and a yard, a meadow. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And in the daytime, they had wonderful shows out there. I saw Val Diamond there one time in the afternoon. Um, cool. At night, it was indoors. Okay. Yeah, actually, they had a they had a nice stage in uh at Fives too. Oh yeah, that wooden right. stage right there in the corner. Dr drums yeah. flooded every year. Oh okay. Well, this is my favorite publicity shot of you, vintage style. I think it's 1984 because it appeared in the paper that year. But okay. wonder what happened to those bellhops. Uh, one of them I'm still in uh, on Facebook with. Oh. Well, I think the one in the center. Oh. Yeah, Glenn. Uh, moved to New York City, and he actually did the scores to the Mel Brooks uh, movies and uh, uh, what's springtime for Hitler? Uh, producers. Yeah, the producers. He did, wow. he did all the arrangements. Oh. Yeah. Fantastic. The pianist in the photo. Yeah. yeah. That's terrific. Wow. Gosh, I love that show. Look at that hair. Yeah. <laughs> Steve wanted me not to be blonde. He wanted me to be a redhead, so that's a wig. Oh, okay. Oh. He just spoil the uh, the news. <laughs> <laughs> now here's a double page spread of the cable car awards, and that's Johnny Ray. Yes, that's Johnny Ray that I'm with. And uh, I remember time. you were sitting at a table ringside, and I went up to say hello to somebody, and at your table, I think there were ten of you, and you said to me, "Mark, that's Johnny Ray. Ask him for his autograph." He doesn't <laughs> think anybody. He doesn't think anybody knows who he is. So yeah. I went, you know, oh my God, Johnny Ray, can I have your autograph? <laughs> he actually, he sat at the table and he had to change the batteries of his hearing aid. Oh. oh <laughs> the yeah. glamour of show business, you know? Wow. <laughs> but then he got up and sang that night. He did, yeah. he did yeah. a song at the Cable Car Awards. That, that was at the old Kabuki Theater. Right. I remember. Yeah, it's called Japantown Theater at the time. Yeah before it was split up into movies. Huh. And then Alan Selby is at the top receiving an award. Oh, yeah. Alan. Oh, oh my God. Oh, yeah. Oh, so, there's Jim and me. And the next picture is me and Jim Spatonich. Oh, there you are. Yeah. Oh, for God's sake. So we did have something with both of you in it. That's great. Did How many times do either of you remember you've performed or produced shows or been to shows with Sylvester, who is in the almost to the left of Sharon? Oh, million. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just a lot before he passed. I was really pissed off that the Cable Car Awards died before I got here because I thought it would have been fun to, you know, to oh. nominate friends to but you got you got a, you got one that that year, I think. Me? Board of Directors Award. 
Oh, okay. I That's have great. a couple. I have a. I have, still have the awards. Really? That's I'm great. Good. I've got a bunch. I have, of, I have of more in the bathroom. Brag. <laughs> So here's one where Sharon, you performed at midnight for the AIDS Danceathon in 1988. We're jumping ahead. It's kind of historic. There's an ATT study ad, a dating ad, and then uh, a photo of a Danceathon raised forty five thousand hmm. dollars. And you performed with Danny Williams. Yeah. He was yeah. another another real real trooper, regular for benefits. I remember seeing Danny at the Eagle often hosting events. And now we're switching to 1980 to this. This is my favorite. The AIDS Emergency Front Fund Pennies from Heaven Flow. Tell us more, Sharon. Well, uh, they, they had jars of uh, that were put in all the bars where they put pennies in. People would just take their loose change and throw it in there. And that, that was the campaign to raise money uh, for the penny jars. That's Bob Ross, the publisher of the BAR in the tuxedo to my uh, left. And next to him is Louise Molinari, the former wife of John Molinari, who uh, was a supervisor in town. Uh, and I think that there are people dressed up like pennies that were right. dancing along the yeah. side. But I'm singing every time it rains, it rains, and it is from the disco version of it. We did a disco track to it. Oh, okay. I, I love how you can see a little bit of fog over where Twin Peaks is. Yeah. And just in the background in the sun, you can see the, the marquee for Beck's Motor Lodge. Oh, dear. Oh, <laughs> don't remind me of that place, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> when it was, when, when, when No on Six was defeated, or when No on Six won, which was going to make the, the teachers go uh, and register if they were homosexuals. Right. right. It, it that proposition lost. Uh, we partied, and they boosted me up on top of the newsstand on the corner of 18th and Castro. And the gay band had just marched in and played the song. And I said to John uh, John Sims, "Please play something. Uh, let's all sing. Let's because all the people had come out of the bars, and there were police on the outside edges of it." And I said, "Please." And he said, "No, we have to. We're going to disband because they thought something might happen with the police." Oh. So I, somebody boosted me up, uh, God help them, up on that newsstand, that old shack that used to be there. Yeah. And I right. stood there and sang, I said, let's everybody sing. And so we, we sang patriotic song, God bless America, and, you know, old beautiful, our spacious skies. And here's all these guys out the bar singing. And so it kind of diffused the whole thing. The police went, well, this can't, it's not. Oh, that's, sweet. that's like, that's like Jeanette McDonald in the earthquake movie. That's right. See, well, there you go. There I was just singing away. <laughs> Call me the earthquake. I need a microphone. So. Well, these are from, I didn't mention, these are from the Marcus Hernandez's print photos from the 80s. He was the leather right. columnist for many decades. Yeah. And he also photographed social. you got some great gams going on there, Sharon. Thank you, baby. I've been known for that. I've been known <laughs> for that. Marcus and I were the honorary co-chairs of the AIDS Emergency Fund twice. Wow. Um, the yeah. parade that was this was the one year that the parade went from Castro Street to east the, down the to the Embarcadero. Yeah, yeah because, okay. Because Civic Center was all torn up that year. Right. Hmm. That's why Bex was in the background. Right. Oh, that's it. And there's a little poster that says "Living with AIDS, not dying of AIDS." Little hand drawn poster there. So we'll switch to the Eagle. More Marcus photos from 1988. And here you are. I love that Mickey Mouse shirt, Sharon. I wish I had it. <laughs> um, and there's some leather hunks um, and you were helping an auction they're selling off some artsy sexy photos and yeah. we, that, did, we did a lot of fundraising there for the AIDS emergency fund pretty much on Sundays yeah. at Beer Bust right? yeah Always. Oh, that's Colt Thomas in the bottom with this in the leather vest oh, yeah. he was IML 1985 no yes. 83 84 I was the judge in 84. It was year 83. Obviously yeah. showing off his talent. Yeah. Yeah. Love the hat. Thank now, you. Sharon, you think you remember who the guys in the upper right photo are? George is in the black. George Burgess. Burgess. And uh, shoot. Shoot. Uh, he was in, they were both presidents of the uh, AIDS Emergency Fund. Okay. Co presidents. Okay. Uh, uh, and and I, what I mentioned before is I love how Marcus was smart enough to get up on the roof of the Eagle to get a nice 
wide shot. I haven't seen a photo from that angle at the Eagle in years. Uh, he was courageous, matter of fact. <laughs> it was the Father's Day auction in June 19, 1988. Who knows when that uh, roof was repaired? And he wasn't exactly a lightweight, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's oh, some more photos. God. I hope people can scan through them and see if they see oh. old friends who've gone or whatever. A lot of lot of faces there. Pretty amazing. A lot of laughs. Yeah. So of here's laughs. a. Sorry. Uh, I said a lot of laughs going on there. Oh, okay. I'm getting yeah. echo because of me. I'm going to turn my volume down. Here's a little ad for you at the Blue Moose Muse on Golf and Hayes in 1990. And actually, that that Blue Muse, which was on Golf. It used the same kitchen as the Chinese restaurant across uh, around the corner. <laughs> I know the fact, but I know the fact. <laughs> Backstage lore. Here's another leather event you're mentioned in, in Marcus's column in 1991. Yeah. Hmm. Good God, the gauntlet. Mm. And here's an ad for Josie's J Cabaret and Juice Joint, another historic venue. Yep. Uh, On 16th. Ron. Ron owned that. Nice guy. And he became a limousine driver after he got rid of the club. He had two clubs. He had one on Valencia. Uh, and I can't the remember. That Valencia one. Rose. Yes, that's it. Thank you very much. And Donald Montwell. Right. Donald yeah. Montwell. Yes. So here in the ad, it's mentioning you have a CD. Is it called Now and Then? Love yeah. It. Yeah, it was my new, it was my first CD. It was, uh, no, it wasn't my first CD. It was my second one. I took songs from uh, then, which was on my country western album, and re recorded some new songs and put them both together. So it was now and then. Are those available online or on Amazon or something? Uh, you could probably get them online at my website. Um, it's it's seen. It's got country. It's got uh, some great tunes on it. Really. Okay. Hello. And speaking of country, here you are in 2010 in an advanced article about the San Francisco County Fair for the AIDS Emergency Fund. Brother. I, I love that, yeah. that, that shirt. Was that at the Armory? You know, I don't know. I can't even remember. Sorry, I didn't scan the whole article, so I can't see. No. I still have that shirt, except now, I, since I lost 35 pounds, it looks like I'm wearing my mother's clothes. You know? Oh, gosh. Wow. Okay. <laughs> So here's a 2016 article where Roberto Friedman, arts editor, mentions you for another performance that was coming up at the time at the Cinnabar Theater in Petaluma. Uh, yeah, I did my Sophie Tucker one-woman show there. Yeah. Huh. Love the hair. Now, you did it especially when you do Sophie Tucker. You do it differently? That's a wig, honey. Oh, okay. You wear a different outfit. Yes, okay. Expensive wig. Very Jumping up to the recent past in our bar tab section, uh, David Elijah Namon did an interview with you in, in January 2020 when you, cabaret legend, when you returned to Feinstein's at the Nico, the new Feinstein's. How did that go? Uh, fine. You know, I'm alive to tell the tale, I guess. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the jump with some historic photos. Some other Sophie, there you're performing. And then there's that, there's that favorite headshot or that group shot again that I use. So let me get Steve this. Silver. That, that Steve was, Silver, uh, that's it, yes. Yeah, I did a show, a Christmas show for him, or just a show, basically. And uh, those were the, I had three backup singer-dancers. And Glenn played the piano. Yeah. Fugazi. Steve Silver from Beach Blanket? Huh? Steve Silver from Beach Blanket? Yes, uh -huh. yeah. Okay. I was in the basement, and they were above me. They were <laughs> doing, their, the, the you know, Beach Blanket was above me. And... Uh, so sometimes in the back, because my stage was in the front and their stage was in the back on different levels. So that uh, sometime in the middle of my show, you could hear them tap dancing. <laughs> Very faintly, but you know, was, so we kind of had to play louder music than you know, kind of cover. Okay. <laughs> it was. So I, I think it's amazing that, it, that I, you know, I thought, oh, I told Mark, you know, and Michael Flanagan, who'll be on the main uh, chat on December 9th that we're inserting this into. Well, we got to get Sharon because she's performed in every venue in the Bay Area as well as around the world. And you, you don't don't cut yourself short. You remembered ten times more than any other person could by just scrolling through some old screen caps of pages from the old BARs. I really appreciate your sense of history and your sense of recollection and knowing and remembering these these venues and these, these people. I retain water too. 
<laughs> I saw the earlier interview where you said that you realized at some point that your job was to sell drinks. Yeah. <laughs> well, liquor. I mean, it is. That was it, you know. Get yeah. the butts in the chair and sell the liquor. And yeah. boy, did we sell liquor at the plush room. Whew. That was when people drank and they didn't give a shit if they drove or not. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was, no seatbelts either. <laughs> yeah, it was a different time. You know? Yeah. A different yeah. time. So we will have missed this when this airs, but tell me again your upcoming performances, Sharon. Well, uh, one is on the 9th, which is on a Thursday. In the day that we're taking It's this. going to be uh, streamed. Don't ask me how I do it. Uh, I'm not doing it. Somebody else is streaming me. Uh, and then, of course, uh, we have the uh, reef benefit, which is this Sunday, which we has already passed. But uh, December fifth, yes, the yeah. help is on the way for the holidays. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that, I think that's the twentieth year. I think I did the first one, at, at, which was at a hotel on uh, huh, one up from Geary is post on post. Okay. So, uh, well, I'm going to hunt down that gorilla suit finale, and hopefully we can show it on the December 9th when we read when we do the full section of this chat. Thank you both for participating, and Sharon in particular. Mark, you'll be back with us for the full uh, chat segment on the 9th, and it's great to see you both, and well, at least not in 3D. Good to be seen. Great to see you, Sharon. Good to see you too, honey. Best okay. of luck with the new book. Thanks. Yes, more books. Yes, got my name right. <laughs> Oh, you met Arlene Francis. I met Arlene. Yes, I did. You told me you were on her show from Sardis. Yes. On her radio show. Yes. Well, my new book is called Arlene Francis and Me. Oh, uh, really? Subtitled Pandemic Diaries from Castro Street. Oh, for God's sake. Which and you can follow Mark on Facebook and he'll give you little excerpts of the, of the okay. upcoming. I met Kitty Carlisle Hart, but I'm not writing a book about it. First okay, guys, got to go. First okay. in, in San Francisco. Yes. Okay. We're